Well, good morning and welcome to another edition of the Morning Devotional. My name is Pastor William Hill. I'm the pastor of Providence Church, a congregation of the Presbyterian Church in America. We are located in Evansville, Indiana. Today is Thursday, July 14th, 2022. This is edition number 24 of season five of the Morning Devotional. Today we find ourselves in Genesis chapter 24. It is indeed the longest narrative uh, in the Genesis record. Let's pray together first and then we'll consider this chapter. Uh, this morning. Father, as we come to your word, we come asking that you would help us, that you would give us the grace that we need to understand your word. We know that all scripture is breathed out by you and it's profitable for our lives. And so <clears throat> we pray that even in this narrative, we might glean some important truths from it and that you would help us uh, to see what you would have us see and that we would live according to what we uh, learn even this day. We pray for Christ's sake. Amen. <clears throat> Well, as I mentioned, Genesis 24 is indeed the longest narrative in the Genesis uh, record. This account, of course, is how uh, Rebecca becomes Isaac's uh, wife. And, and as we uh, weave our way through the 66, um, 67 uh, verses of the chapter, uh, there are at least three things that I just want to point out very, very briefly. Now, the overarching theme of the chapter is that Abraham instructs a servant to secure a wife for Isaac. And we see that right there in the very beginning of the, of the section, uh, which frames the entirety of the chapter. Now, Abraham was old, well advanced in years, and the Lord had blessed Abraham in all things. And Abraham said to his servant, the oldest of his household, who had charge of all that he had, put your hand under my thigh that I may make you swear by the Lord, the God of heaven and God of earth, that you will not take a wife for my son from the daughters of the Canaanites among whom, among whom I dwell. And so this servant's going to return. He's going to return to Haran, where Abraham came from. He's not to take a wife for Isaac from the people of the Canaanites. Now, later on, uh, Esau is going to do just that, to, to anger his mother and father. And, um, but here we have this, uh, this servant, uh, the oldest of his household, who is uh, going to um, go. And he goes uh, um, uh, alone uh, he, after asking a number of questions, uh, clarifying questions as to what to do and, and how... Uh, how to proceed in this uh, the securing of this woman who has never met Isaac. Uh, she lives in a far-off land, and so Abraham continually repeats uh, that the Lord will indeed take care of him. And so the servant took ten of his master's camels and departed, taking all sorts of choice gifts from his master. And he rose and went to Mesopotamia to the city of Nahor. And... Um, there he um, begins this uh, entire uh, process by which he uh, might, by which he might secure a wife um, um, for uh, for um, Isaac. It, it's interesting as we consider just even the journey itself. I was just reading uh, here earlier this the journey uh, to. Uh, to where he is to go. When Isaac was 40 years old, Abraham sent his eldest servant back to Paddan Aram, the land of his relative, to obtain a wife for Isaac. The servant found Rebekah, the granddaughter of Abram's, Abraham's brother Nahor, and he brought her back to Isaac, who was living in the Negev. Later, Jacob would make the same journey as he fled from his brother Esau. This is a interesting theme that keeps coming up in the book of Genesis. But what is inter interesting, just some of the facts, um, it's about a 520-mile journey along ancient routes, and it would take, according to one commentary, it would have taken Abraham's servant approximately 21 days to travel. And so we have some protection, of course. The man is alone. He's traveling alone. He's not traveling with a caravan. That would have slowed him down. And so he travels this journey, and he comes to, these, uh, he comes, uh, to the place in which he then uh, meets... Uh, he meets... Um, uh, meets uh, Rebecca, and so uh, we also uh, see not only uh, how Abraham is uh, he's concerned about not having Isaac take a wife from the Canaanite women, but we also note how the servant is faithful. He takes this journey; it's a very long journey, 520 miles, and uh, uh, of travel, 
Um, it's, it's likely dangerous. It, it, it's unknown, much like Abraham's journey was when he left his home and came uh, to the place in which God showed him. And so regardless of all the difficulties that were in front of him, the, the servant was indeed faithful to do exactly what his master told him to do. And of course, I don't need to stretch this, I don't think, very far. I think you know where I'm going with this. We too, as the servants of the Lord, must be faithful. There are going to be hardships and difficulties in front of us. There's plenty of unknown, uh, plenty of unknowns in our lives. Uh, we don't know what tomorrow brings, of course. And so uh, we just need to be, strive to be faithful to what God has told us to do and leave the results to Him. Even if Abraham told his servant, but if the woman is not willing to follow you, then you will be free from this oath of mine, only you must not take my son back there. So the servant put his hand under the thigh of Abraham, his master, and swore to him concerning this matter. Abraham trusted that the Lord would provide, and indeed he does. And so there's a series of events that take place. I'm not going to deal with the specifics of this, but these series of events are the very providential working of God to bring Rebecca to Isaac. There's some unusual things that happened. Verse 15, before he had finished speaking, behold, Rebekah, who was born to Bethuel, the son of Milcah, the wife of Nahor, Abraham's brother, came out with her water jar on her shoulder. And so there it is, right there, presented for the servant is this, this woman that will end up becoming, end up becoming the wife of Isaac. And so it's through a series of events that take place, beginning with verse 15, we come to the climax of the chapter where Rebekah, for the first time, meets Isaac. It's really an act of faith on her part. She has never met this man before. She doesn't know anything about him. And, um, but yet she does come and uh, become, his, um, become his wife. And so, um, so we do see, uh, really, the faithfulness of the servant as well as the providential working of the Lord when it comes to this, this union. Now, this union is very important because, because from this union, of course, we're going to produce Jacob and Esau. We know what that means. We know that Esau I hated, Jacob I loved, Esau I hated, Jacob's the seed of the woman, Esau the seed of the serpent. And from Jacob comes the 12 tribes of Israel, and the covenant line and succession continues through the New Testament. This is an extremely important marriage in the Genesis narrative. But we can learn, of course, that as God's people, we are to be faithful in spite, regardless of the circumstances and regardless of what's in front of us. And we are to trust and rely upon the providence of God as He governs and um, and, and, and works uh, over all of his creation, all of his creatures. And so we can trust this God, even the God that brought Rebekah to Isaac, we can trust our God to take care of us as, as, um, as his people. Well, I trust these times are helpful for you. I hope they are. If you have any comments or questions, you can leave me a note. The way to contact me is there before you on the screen. And so until Friday, when we consider uh, Genesis chapter uh, 25 and the birth of Jacob, Esau and Jacob, may the Lord bless you today, and may you serve him. God bless.